So basically, this uh, unit, uh, this uh, uh, chapter in Guyton, starts with uh, the tubular processing of filtrate, uh, the, the, the second step in urine formation. Uh, the first chapter dealt with uh, issues related to the glomerulus. And now we'll be talking uh, about, in the coming lectures as well, we'll, talk, we'll be talking about tubular uh, functions. So in that, some general concepts are there. Uh, firstly, there are two routes through which uh, the lumen, uh, substances from the lumen are transported via the cells into the interstitium and to the peritubular uh, blood. Okay, So these two pathways are paracellular, which is between the cells via the tight junctions and transcellular, which is through the cells. Of course, the through the cell transport requires some sort of channel or coupling protein while the paracellular uh, pathway uh, can be any water movement and along with it some solute can uh, just tag along. So general overview of general rules of uh, solute transport is that uh, uh, solutes need, uh, need assistance. Uh, they, 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 they go through all sorts of uh, different mechanisms. Uh, the passive ones being diffusion, uh, facilitated diffusion, you know these things, uh, these are basic stuff, uh, channels, uh, uh, SIM and anti-port mechanisms. Uh, solvent drag is when the solvent is moving and it's dragging uh, along uh, solute. Sodium and water transport is one of these examples, one of an example of solvent drag. Uh, then active transport is, you know, uh, uh, the famous example of sodium potassium ATPs uh, in which uh, ATP is used and uh, these two are transported against their gradient. The important part here is, uh, in addition to uh, the solute transport, which we'll be discussing uh, uh, ion-wise. So we'll talk about sodium today. Uh, in the next lectures, we'll be talking about potassium, uh, hydrogen, uh, glucose, and so on and so forth. Uh, so that is uh, solute. Water is an important point here, of course. And water transport, important to note, is that it's passive only okay it's passive there are no active uh, mechanisms transporting water uh, and it's uh, all about gradients which we'll be discussing in detail when we talk about uh, uh, water homeostasis uh, this is an overview of the kind of work that the kidney does uh, if you if you appreciate uh, the red ones in particular everything is important but the red ones are crucially important to, to understand what is going on. So water per liters in liters per day is filtered uh, 180 liters, uh, excreted only 1.5, and the rest, that is 99.2%, is reabsorbed. Sodium's uh, uh, reabsorption rate is also extremely high, 99.4%. Bicarbonate is 99.9%. .9 Glucose is 100%. Now, th there's another reason for showing you this, uh, this table is that water deals with the osmolarity of the fluids. So if this 99.2% is not achieved, then you're looking at osmolarity uh, imbalance in the body fluids, which has its own attendant issues. Uh, sodium, I would like you to uh, start forming in a, a, a concept, is that sodium is related with ECF volume. Water is related with osmolarity of the, uh, of the ECF uh, and, and the rest of the fluids. Sodium is related with volume, ECF volume. And you know that volume controls pressure, something that we'll delve in uh, in a bit. So water and sodium, although till now you, have, you, you, have, you may have a concept from your chemistry classes in earlier years that they are together, which is true, and you also uh, would have a concept that if you want to change the osmolarity of, uh, of any solution in a, in a, in a laboratory setting, uh, you may add sodium and chloride to it, and which will increase its osmolarity and vice versa to decrease its osmolarity. Uh, and you can also manipulate water to change the osmolarity. So you have both options. I would like you to make a concept now in the body uh, osmolarity, uh, the body controls by manipulating water, uh, primarily, not sodium. 
primarily. And as far as ECF volume is concerned, although water can uh, theoretically be used to modulate water, uh, uh, I beg your pardon, uh, volume, but the preferred handle, quote unquote handle, of uh, ECF volume that the body uses is sodium. Okay, this is an important point. Uh, bicarb is important in acid base uh, disorders and uh, uh, just a brief line because we'll be discussing acid base in detail uh, next week or maybe next week to, the, to that. Uh, bicarbonate is that soldier, foot soldier, which gets used all the time in the battle against the acid, the acid production. So you need to preserve, you need, you need to not just preserve the bicarbonate that gets filtered a lot, okay, by, re, by reclaiming it almost entirely. Uh, you also need to make new bicarbonate, as we'll discuss in the acid base uh, unit. Uh, glucose is crucially important to uh, reabsorb 100% of glucose uh, uh, that, you, that you filter. And this is also hugely important because you don't want glucose wandering off beyond proximal convoluted tubule uh, because beyond that there are no receptors for glucose reabsorption. The glucose reabsorption uh, transporters are only available at the PCT. Uh, and beyond that, if glucose uh, is allowed to go, it uh, gathers up water around it and it, it doesn't go alone in urine. Uh, it, it basically takes water with it and hence you see diabetics, uh, they, they have this symptom, they complain of increased urination. Uh, that is because of they have uh, uh, an overwhelming glucose which is filter filtering out into the PCT and not enough transporters are there in this scenario. I mean, it's, it's the, the, the transporters are enough for normal uh, glucose reabsorption, but since glucose load is a lot, uh, not the whole thing cannot be picked up uh, and then glucose starts to appear in urine uh, along with water and this creates a lot of issues. So th this shows you the, the uh, only a glimpse of the crucial stuff that kidney does every day, day in and day out. And just the red stuff uh, that you see on this slide uh, is enough to appreciate that if any of these things uh, change uh, to some extent, uh, the body can go into uh, a lot of uh, problems. Uh, this is the urine composition over the uh, or, uh, overview. It's normal urine composition. You can appreciate the sodium, the urea, uh, the pH is is very important. So it's so it's a uh, a lot of variation in the pH. You can see appreciate five is quite acidic. So it can really change. Uh, the kidney can change uh, the hydrogen ion uh, excretion in the urine and control the pH of the body fluids. Uh, you can also appreciate the uh, rather wide uh, range of osmolarity uh, in the body fluids, uh, which uh, shows you the ability of the kidney to handle water, uh, relative water excretion uh, or water conservation if the need arises.